This section is on the cardiovascular system. So, what is the cardiovascular system? It involves the heart, blood vessels and the blood. So these are all things that you need to know about. So, first of all, what are the three main functions of the cardiovascular system? The first one is transport. So this is the ability for the blood to carry oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients and lactic acid in and out of the body. The next function of the cardiovascular system is clotting. So this is to prevent infection from entering the body when we cut ourselves or get a wound whilst playing sport. As we'll learn later, platelets are responsible for clotting of the blood. The final function of the cardiovascular system is temperature regulation. So without the ability for our blood vessels to vasodilate, we wouldn't be able to release heat and therefore the body would overheat and doing physical activity would be quite difficult. So these three things are all things which you need to be aware of. So our transport, our clotting and our temperature regulation. So probably the most important part of the cardiovascular system is the heart. So heart anatomy means that we just need to know all of these different areas of the heart. So we need to know what the pulmonary vein does. We need to know what the pulmonary artery does. We need to know about the different types of valve. We need to know about what the atria do and the ventricles as well. Obviously, as we get further down the line to A level and going to university, things like this, there are a lot more things about the heart that we'll eventually need to know. But these basics are really important to get an understanding of so that you know and you can discuss the route of the blood through the heart. So if we look on the right hand side here, a few things to remember. Blood always leaves the heart when it is pumped out of a ventricle. So if we look at the right hand side here, this right ventricle, blood will always be pumped out of this ventricle to the lungs to get oxygenated. Equally, in this left ventricle here, blood will always get pumped out of this ventricle, out the aorta, to the rest of the body so oxygenated blood can get to the rest of the body. Next point, <clears throat> the right hand side of the heart always has deoxygenated blood in it. So this means that the blood has come in through the superior vena cava down through the atrium into the right ventricle. It needs to be pumped to the lungs to pick up oxygen and then go back to the heart to be pumped out and carry oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Equally, the left side always carries oxygenated blood because the blood has come back from the lungs after being oxygenated. One thing that you'll probably notice looking at this diagram is that it is the opposite way round to which you are looking at it. So what you've got to imagine is when you're looking at a diagram of the heart or any diagram in PE, you've got to imagine that this heart is actually inside your body. So this side here is the right side and this side here is the left side. So it's the opposite way round to the way that you're looking at it. So two things to be careful about the pulmonary vein so this one here veins usually carry deoxygenated blood but on this occasion at the heart the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood so that blood is the blood coming back from the lungs into the heart to get pumped out to the rest of the body Equally, you've got to make sure that you get the pulmonary artery round the right way. So this carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygenated. So once again, if we look at this heart, so if we start up here by the superior vena cava, 
the blood comes in down through the superior vena cava from the body it's deoxygenated down into the right atrium into the right ventricle it gets pumped out via the pulmonary artery to the lungs so that would have gone to the lungs there once it has been oxygenated at the lungs the blood comes down through the pulmonary vein down into the left atrium into the left ventricle and then gets pumped out of the aorta here to the rest of the body so it's really important that we know the passage of blood that gets pumped through the heart and around the body this is a question which comes up quite regularly in nine mark questions so you really got to be aware of how it works and i think this diagram on the left explains it nicely so as we've just spoken about we've got the heart in the middle here okay you need to know where the blood gets pumped around and how it enters and leaves the heart we've got our pulmonary artery here which we just spoke about where it talks about taking the blood to the lungs to get oxygenated and then equally after the blood is oxygenated you can see how it moves down the pulmonary veins and back into the heart once it leaves the heart through the aorta it will travel down along these arteries because it's oxygenated and to the rest of the body so we imagine here we see we can see all of these capillaries so oxygen is able to get into all of the muscles to help us during exercise equally once the muscles have used up the oxygen the carbon dioxide diffuses back into the capillaries and is taken back to the heart along veins so veins have got our valves in it to stop that low pressure blood from going backwards they've got a nice wide lumen and it travels all the way back to the heart for the same process to happen again and again you might see this word pop up as well in an exam question double pump the reason why the heart and the system of the heart is called a double pump is because it quite simply has two sides one which pumps oxygenated and one which pumps deoxygenated blood so you can sort of see on this diagram here you've got the left side sort of depicted by the red suggesting oxygenated blood and on the right side you've got the blue side which depicts the deoxygenated blood so on here very simply got the passage of blood in writing um, to help you out when talking about the passage of blood through the heart so you could get asked an exam question to start in any area of the heart here it starts at the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava they're both roughly at the same place because it's the vena cava superior just means the part that's above inferior just means the part that is below so it talks about the deoxygenated blood entering the heart through the vena cava and then it just goes down through the list of everything that we've spoken about in terms of entering the right atrium down into the right ventricle out to the lungs back to the heart and out to the body blood vessels so there are three main blood vessels that you need to know in detail for your GCSEs the first one of these is arteries you can see an example of it right here so you can see they're quite they're quite thick they've got elastic fibers um, and they're quite muscular but they have got a rather small lumen so the lumen is the is the tube which the blood actually travels through okay and these can vasodilate and vasoconstrict so they can come to the surface to let off heat they can also go um, narrow and go back into the body to uh, let off less heat and uh, sort of decrease blood flow 
Our next uh, type of blood vessel is our veins. So these ones here. So contrary to arteries, they've got a rather large lumen. <clears throat> so this allows a lot of blood to go through, um, mainly because they carry low pressure deoxygenated blood. They also contain valves in them. The reason they contain valves is to stop blood from going the wrong way. So once it goes through, it's harder for it to go back. And it's likely that blood could go backwards without valves because it is so low pressure. There's nothing forcing it through. The last uh, blood vessel that we need to know about are our capillaries. These are the smallest type of blood vessels that we have and are either found in the lungs by the alveoli to allow for diffusion and gaseous exchange or down by the muscle fibers once again to allow for diffusion um, of oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules. So a few key things to know. They are one cell thick so that allows for diffusion to happen. They're very narrow and therefore they have a slow blood flow. The reason for the slow blood flow is so that it allows time for gases to diffuse between the walls of the arteries and wherever they're trying to diffuse the oxygen or the carbon dioxide molecules. The blood. Blood contains four main parts that you need to know about. Red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma. Red blood cells, they contain haemoglobin. Haemoglobin is um, something which makes the red blood cells red. They allow oxygen to combine to the red blood cell molecule. So without the haemoglobin, red blood cells would be unable to carry oxygen. Because they carry oxygen, they allow an athlete to complete physical activity. A word which you might come across, especially later on in A-level, is something called oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin is when an oxygen molecule combines with a haemoglobin molecule. And that is called oxyhemoglobin. So you might not need to know that in too much detail for your GCSEs, but it is good to know. Globin. White blood cells. These fight disease and infection and therefore keep an athlete healthy. So when you get ill or if a germ gets in a cut, white blood cells will come to your defence and they will try to kill off any disease or infection. These are important because without them, we'd get ill and we'd be unable to take part in physical activity. Platelets, they're responsible for clotting the blood at a wound to prevent infection. So when we cut ourselves during physical activity or sport, platelets are the part of the blood which ultimately stop the blood from leaking out and also they help in forming a scab and therefore stopping any infection getting in. The last part of the blood is the plasma. That's the watery part of the blood which makes it a liquid. So without this liquid part of the blood, the blood would just simply be too viscous, so it'd be too thick to get pushed around the body. And we'd get clots all the time in our arteries and we'd probably suffer strokes. So it's really important in allowing the blood to flow nice and smoothly around the body. So you've got some long answer questions here which you could get asked. So first one, discuss the role of the blood in allowing physical activity to take place. So for this question, you may talk about how you have red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma all of their roles in allowing physical activity to take place. Question two, explain the passage of blood through the heart and around the body starting at the vena cava. 
So think about where the vena cava is in relation to the heart. Where does the blood then go? Where does it travel through the heart to the lungs, back to the heart, out to the body? What blood vessels are there which allow the blood to move around the body? And how does it get back to where it started? Discuss the role of blood vessels and their effectiveness in what they do. So you need to think about what arteries do, what do they have that other vessels don't and what makes them good at their role. Why are veins good at what they do? What's, what sort of anatomical areas do they have that arteries don't? What are capillaries? How are they good in allowing molecules to diffuse through them and where are they found?